In this video, we're going to be getting started with Softer. So this is for the complete beginners. We're gonna go through the site, how you can get started very quickly, and also key functions of using this platform. So first of all, what is Softer? Softer is a platform where you can create web apps and websites within 10 minutes using Airtable. So to get started, you're going to need to go to softer.io and create an account. And also what I would do is go to Airtable and make sure that you open up a free account. Now, what is Airtable? Airtable is a platform where you can create databases and so many other things. But I would say if you're not familiar with it, it's similar to Google Sheets where you can create databases and rows of data. So to get started, we're going to go to softer.io. And before we even log in, what it's really important to note is think about what you're trying to create. And the reason I say that is there are so many different things you can do with this platform that you can start going down the rabbit hole if you're not planning effectively of what you're even trying to start. So if you already have an idea of what you're trying to do, what kind of web app or website you wanna create, that's great. If you don't, take a look at different options and we're gonna start with the templates, but just think about one idea. If you have multiple things, write them down so then you can start trying out different things, but there are tons of things you can be using online you can create an online course you can create a marketplace those are so different you can create a upvote tool all of these things so make sure you're picking one so then you can get started really quickly using softer so what we're going to do is we're going to log in we're going to be taken to a screen where we can create an application so i'm going to click add new application and right off the bat we can decide do we want to create a web app or do we want to create a website? Okay, so again, when you have a web app, you're going to have a lot more features potentially. The website, it's pretty straightforward. What kind of website do you want to build? And I suggest just using a template because that allows you to already have the format down and it allows you to move a lot quicker. I'm going to go with web apps and then I'm going to be thinking about what kind of web app do I want to create? Okay, so I'm looking at these different designs. What I like is probably the no code resources. So I can preview this right here. Then it's taking, oh look, it loads fa fast. I can see what it has. Okay, so we have the format here, signups, different resources, and also I can add a resource. So there's gonna be an extra page where I can be adding things, all of those things. Okay, I like that, so I'm going to select. Now right here, it's asking, enter your Airtable API key. No worries, all you're doing is going into your Airtable account. Now right here, you have a video, but sometimes it's going too fast, so what should you need to click? So all you do is go over, this is where it comes into Airtable, you've already signed up. Once you sign up, you're gonna log in, and then you're going to go to the right-hand side and click your account button that little image, and then you're going to click account. After going there, you're going to be taken to the account overview, and you're gonna scroll down, and right here, this is where your API information, this is where your personal API key is. You're going to just click the dots over here, and it's gonna reveal your API key. Then you're going to take that API key, you're gonna go back to Airtable, you're gonna copy and paste it, and then click next. After you enter your API key, now you're going to be get, given a choice. You can use the templates base or you can use your own. If you are brand new to Softer, I would use the template base template. I would use that instead of your own because then it creates everything that you need. So I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna click next. And here it says step one, copy template base and then you're going to select your Airtable base here. And what's really nice is I can just do drop downs and add things. So we're going to copy template base. It's going to now give us the copy of it. And in the right hand corner, you're going to click copy base. As I copy the base, it's asking which workplace work workspace would you like to add this new base to? I'm just gonna do the basic one. 
I'm gonna say at table. For if you're just getting started, you'll probably just have your opening um, base, whatever the name is, just say add. And it's going to add it and it's going to be the brand new one right here. And what I like about it even gives you that little, that little tab new, so you know which one it is. Okay, so it's going to be in your main base, it's gonna be no code resources, so I know it's right there for me. Now I can go and I'm going to just click the refresh button because now it's going to be connecting to my Airtable base. So it says select your Airtable base. I'm going to look at the list. No code resources right here. Select your Airtable table. Now what is that? So if I go into this, let's click on this. It's just going to be the table that it's already made. So that table is called no code. So now it's going to be doing its thing, connecting, and there you go. It has already made the resource, the web app resource for me. It's already built out the format for me, and I'm ready to go. Now I can edit it just like a, a, a drag and dropper website builder. So if I click a section, I can now edit whatever I need. So what I would do is if I'm just getting started, I would start looking at each section, the header section, the main call to action section and get comfortable just looking at what it's associating with. So for instance, if I click the header section, I can see what do you want to build without coding? I can see it associates the title with the title. I can say test and I know that it's associated. The subtitle is where the subtitle is. The explore button, I have the button right here and I can go into the actions and change what I want. To add a section, all you're gonna do is click the add block, so that little plus sign, you're going to click it. And now you get all of these options to add to the page. So this is really easy for you to now customize the page the way that you want it. And what I love about this is it already gives you a really good template option so you can move very quickly and now visually you can associate okay what do I want to happen here I mean even look at the pricing there's so many times where if you're using another tool it's so hard to just get a very concise looking uh, um, pricing block it's already made for you right here so you can go down again there are several different sections that you can be adding to the page and once you customize the way that you're you like it then what I would do is looking look at the functionality of the buttons and what I could do with that. So uh, we're in the same section, we're gonna look at this for a second, right? So if we're looking at the button section, I can see, okay, explore, I can add an exclamation point right there, explore, but right below it, now I can decide on the action. So I can say open page, scroll to another section, open external URL. So I can do a lot of different actions. I can have it easily be able to be associated uh, so I can open a new page, self-explanatory, right? So I can open up a new page that I have. What options do I have of different pages already made? I can click the pages button on the, or icon on the left-hand side. I can see other pages that's already been made for me. So I can easily, when I click this button, it will go to that page. But what if I want to have it scroll down to another section to learn more? I simply click scroll to section and I can see what it's going to associate where I go to the rest of the page or I could open external URL so I can click that button and then I can have it go to another website if I want. I would look at the functionality of what I want the user experience to be when they're clicking around on the page. Afterwards if I want to I can add another additional button and I can have more functionality. So again, that really comes down to the storyline, the user behavior, what do I want them to do when they're on the page and all of those things. I can change the view so I know exactly what it would look like on different devices because it's, this whole template is responsive. And I can also, when I'm done making my changes, I can first preview it here and then I can publish it when it's done. So those are the basics just to get started to make sure that you're on the right track. Now, keep in mind, this is just 
the first layer of what you can be doing with the with softer the platform now what we're going to do is make it functional when you're going to be integrating it with Airtable now we've already hooked it up using Airtable but let's look at the functionality when you're adding a resource remember this is for when they add a resource it's going to automatically auto populate so what do we need to do we're going to go to pages we went to the home page now we're going to the add resource page and now when people add to this website this resource page we're going to make sure that it maps correctly in Airtable it allows us again add a new resource add a new no code resource I can edit it right here this is fine the form right here we're going to look at the form and make sure that the form is matching and it's going in the right place so the form right here it's a single line text name of resource we're going to make sure that it matches in um in the section right here so name name so i can look at the tag so the tag i'm scrolling over the question mark is the input name um, that is attributed to the table so it's submit with the form as part of the name slash value pair so it says name right here so name of the resource it's going to be name of the resource right here description at the top it's going to associate with the description the reason it's important that you notice that is just so it's always matching so if you change it if you're using a different base or you go back and make changes you want to always make sure that it's associating with the right descriptions and the right everything right here so it shows up in the right way so you're going to go down the list make sure all of these things match and you have the fields right here so i i'm looking for these uh, five different fields there's five here you can always make sure that they're good to go and after you're good to go the submit button it goes to the um, um, the error table follow the steps described to locate the error table URL so right here if we're making sure that this is the right thing the right resources how do we make sure that it's going to the right um, table you can go into this section how to send form data right here and watch or look at the steps but what we're going to have to do is make sure that we're adding the right section by going to the Airtable base in the Airtable documentation to make sure that everything is hooked up correctly okay that's a lot that's a mouthful what would I do practically just to make sure okay I would first publish this and I'm just going to see and test what do we have so far what errors do we have and then change accordingly so we have everything that we're looking for right here let's add a resource I'm just gonna go here I'm just going to say doc versus the world for the name of the resource I'm gonna add an image so I'm just gonna go to my desktop grab an image real quick Add a URL link. I'm just going to use this document as the URL link. And then it says category, I'm going to say course, right? So I'm going to submit it. And it says submit. Okay. So let's see if it added it. Doc versus the world. And as you can see right here, it already added it right here. I click right here. It already has the details and if I click website it linked to the website that I need I'm good to go I'm good to go with this form. so again I always test it to make sure is it already connected is it everything that I need right now now again what was I talking about that air table to make sure it's connected correctly if I need to connect it, I can go into the API documentation in Airtable. But again, software is great because a lot of these things, it cuts out all the things that I need to do. It's already there. So I'm, I'm cutting out tons of steps. If I want to know where the API documentation is for my Airtable base, I can go over to my Airtable. This was the no-code resources, right? I have this right here. I can click the help 
question mark. I go from there and then the API documentation. Then I can drop down into the no code table. I can go to list records and my URL that I can use if I wanted to change where the form is going is right here in the quotes. The great thing about Softer is it's doing all that for me. I didn't have to go over there, find it. It added it, everything that I wanted, I'm good to go. So again, to get started, we just met, made a resource guide in just a few minutes, probably less than 15 minutes going through this whole thing. And we have a functional resource web app, all there, already connected with our Airtable base and ready to go. Now again, if you look at this, we're still using a lot of the same elements. We can change colors, we can change all of those things. And where do we go? Well, first, we can just go onto the left-hand side and we can go to settings, change all of those things that we want to. We can change the integrations that it's working with. So we can add uh, Crisp, Drift Chat. We can add a Google, uh, a Facebook Pixel, Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, and more. We can have all of these things, but what I would suggest first is get the design, get the functionality down that you want, then go back, make the details with the colors and everything that you want to perfect the, the web app or the website that you created. But you have it right there. Also, you can add SEO, you can add custom code, you can do all of those things and a custom domain right there. This is the overview of how to get started with software for beginners. Let me know, because there's a lot of other things you can do with software. Let me know what you're trying to create, what questions you have. And again, we'll make more content around that, but this is to allow you to get started quickly, allow you to have those easy wins. You've just created your first web app or website, and now you're ready to go to pursue your side hustle or use this for your business. Again, if you have any questions, in the comment section down below. Let me look, uh, let me know what you're working on and we'll talk to you soon.